Now it's time to take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have with me in the studio a chartered accountant and public affairs analyst, Shesson Kwandi, and uh, of course, a strategic consultant and public affairs analyst as well, Dikpo Oyewale. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. So we'll look at the newspapers this morning, starting with the News Direct. It says here, why microfinance banks failed according to NDIC. Blueprint says here, Bainway leaders to federal government on troops. Withdrawal from Bainway, Taraba Nasarawa invitation to calamity. No shutting down OPW has, uh, DHQ assures. NEF patrols Lagos Abuja at Yuletide. The Daily Trust says confusion in agencies over federal government's multiple fuel tracking projects. And we move to the Daily Times. It says federal government not Muslim judiciary. That's according to Bami Dili. The writer says, NAS will continue to partner other arms of government to make our laws work. That's in the Daily Times this morning. So, we will stick with the story in the blueprint. It says, Bainway leaders to federal government on troops. Withdrawal from Bainway, Taraba, Nasarawa, invitation to calamity. And it says, no shutting down OPWS, DHQ assures. NAF patrols Lagos Abuja at Yuletide. That's in the blueprint this morning. Gentlemen, what's your take on this? Uh, firstly, I want to commend the security agency. Uh, in the last few months, we've uh, observed uh, relatively peace yeah. around uh, most of the places where there have been issues. Well, going by this news of withdrawal of these uh, military troops from the areas mentioned I, I don't think there is need for it uh, I, I feel we should sustain this because if you're talking about the development in in the country the predominant thing that we must first have is security mm. where there is peace there is progress mm. there is prosperity but where there is calamity there is issue and uh, we, we, I, I will uh, possibly solicit that the federal government should please put an order on this and still let the security personnel be at this area, at least possibly for the next few months until we this because the way some of these evil doers that attack community behaves is the withdrawal of those guys, I can assure you, within a week, you mm -hmm. have an eat back. You have a, and it's, it's going to be massive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like taking away people and giving opportunity for them to showcase what you have bottled them up to do. Okay. So I, I, I will advise mm. that this should be put on hold for now. I, allow the security people, let the people, let there be development in that area. Let the people, for years, for, for, for years, these guys have lost it economic wise, but now that peace is being restored to that area, they can enjoy some little comfort and develop but, their business and grow. But since there is peace in the area, relative peace, like uh, Sheson mm. said, would it be wise to just remove these troops and take them to places where uh, they are most needed? Okay, so the question now is um, what strategic reason are we being given for the withdrawal of the troops if that's what's going to happen? Because now we're saying we have some form of relative peace. Um, but like he said, I mean, have we been able to ascertain that the splinter groups from these insurgencies, that they've really been stomped out totally? Because like he also rightly said, we may be exposing those environments, those communities, those states to some form of attacks in okay. no distant time to come. Because I mean, uh, the peace that's been there has been enjoyed so far. The redrawal of the soldiers, of the military, where are they being deployed to? We don't hear any of that, okay? I would expect to say that, to, for, to hear that they're being withdrawn from those places and then being taken to some other places where they feel that they are of utmost priority or where they're needed the most. Mm -hmm. but we're not hearing that, but it just looks like he just wants to withdraw them for no strategic reason. Because now we're talking about the military intervention. We have to be strategic and deliberate about how we go about the actions there. So for me, it's, it's, it raises a lot of questions as to what the, the reason is so you, for you, the withdrawal. You, so you believe that the, the military or the federal government has no strategy in place before the withdrawal is done? Okay, well, I, I believe that they do have a strategy, of course, and um, knowing that it's a military exercise, they don't really have to divulge all of that yeah, to yeah. the people. All, all well and good, but um, they should also look at it from a larger perspective of 
what's going to happen long term if the withdrawal happens now. That's all we're asking. Mm. That what, is the, what are the implications going to be if you do get to withdraw those soldiers or the military forces in those areas at this time? Okay, so of course the, head, the, the, the rider here says uh, NAF patrols Lagos Abuja at Yuletide. Is Lagos a, tr a threat? Uh, or are we it, facing a threat? It's, it's the highway. We are not talking of the state now. So Lagos to Abuja, you're talking of a long expanse of uh, mm -hmm. distance and uh, you, you need them really at this point in time. Not only because of the insurgents, we have all these armed robbers, you know, kidnappers, who wants to take opportunity. You know, this is the only time that we have a common ground, both for all religion, mm -hmm. to move from one state to another. Mm -hmm. So they feel it's, it's, it's paramount. Mm -hmm. It's paramount that we have all these guys on this road. I will only plead that they extend it, not just Lagos to Abuja and all the states. The eastern states are there. Benioria Road mm. should be, you see, the easterners traveled a lot. This is the period that you see an average uh, Igbo guy wants to go to the village and pay visit to, to their people. So they should extend that, not just on Lagos, Abuja network, but to the eastern part, to the south-south and make the old coverage secure. What we need, you, you see, with this that we have seen in Benue, you know Benue is the food basket of this country. Yeah. With the peace that they're enjoying now, we, we've seen a lot of good and quality fruits coming out for people to enjoy. This, are, it would have increased the business base, the economic viability of that state. So we encourage that this level of uh, security that we've enjoyed so far should be sustained and even improved upon so that the economic issue that we are actually complaining of, once there is peace and stability, mm. definitely the economy will grow. Mm. But where there is no peace, you discover that even if there are infrastructural development, mm. those are the first area where those guys will eat on. You develop a road today, the, you develop power stations, they bring it down. And you discover that you'll be spending and spending more. Mm. But once we have peace all around, I believe economy will take its own and we can have a better perspective for 2020. Well, Benue Taraba Nasarawa said has had its own fair share of insurgency, of course, mm. the uh, former head of clash as yeah. well. Yes. How do you think the state governors there can come together <laughs> to, in a, a, irrespective of the fact that the, 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 the troops are being withdrawn from there, how can the state governors in those regions ensure that they collaborate to st ensure that there is relative peace there? Okay, well, for me, I think that um, because the kind of system we run in Nigeria, the state governors don't have any real authority over mm. the police force, okay? But I believe that at the community level, they should be able to get folks to intervene into these things because um, I believe that no matter what form of insurgency we're fighting, mm. they have their base in a certain community. The yeah. people who are involved in such insurgencies are possibly members of various communities, communities around, yeah. okay? So now if we're neighbors, I know that, oh, okay, this is somebody from your community, you're the head of, the, of this community, can you account for the people in your community? In the areas, okay, what's going on in that abandoned building okay. in your area? So you're talking about, talking about advantage of the vigilante groups in those communities? Yes, yeah. yes, so we we need to, we need, they, they really do need to take advantage of them because now they don't have the full authority to control the Nigeria police force, but at, at that level, they can right. community policing. They can get a lot of things done, and I think that is something they really do need to look into. All right. I, I right. think I they think. can we take a little leave from what Lagos is having. Okay. This neighborhood quickly, quickly. watch. We need to go so they can borrow from there and make sure they secure their state. It's a collective stop between them, and there are people who enjoy it, mm. and it will be good for them too as governors. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for talking to us on this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. And I have with me in the studio a chartered accountant and public affairs analyst Cheson Okwade. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank and we also me. have a strategy consultant and also a public affairs analyst, Dipo Oyewole. Good morning. Thank you so much. And compliments of the season. Of the season. Although we didn't get to see the rice and the chicken and turkey that we expected. Well, during they, the they it's, it's mine, mine, mine is stuck in the papa gridlock. Oh, wow. So you get it. <laughs> 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 it will definitely come after three weeks. <laughs> All right, um, let's take a look at what we have on the Nigerian newspapers this morning. I was starting with the News Direct newspaper, and it has on its headline, Benue leaders to FG on troops. Um, withdrawal from Benue, a Taraba Nasarawa invitation to ca calamity. 
no shutting down OPWs, uh, a DHQ assures. Uh, so NAF patrols Lagos, Abuja at Utah. That's what you find on the blueprint. And on the news direct, we have why microfinance banks failed, says the NDIC. That's what you find there on the news direct newspaper. On Daily Trust, very quickly, we have confusion in agencies over FG's multiple fuel tracking projects. That's what you find on the Daily Trust newspaper. On the Daily Times newspaper, FG not muzzling judiciary, says Bamidele. He says, NAS will continue to partner with the arms of government to make our laws work. That's what you find on the Daily Times newspaper. Let's move on to some other newspapers now. On uh, the Guardian newspaper, you have where CBN aired on new bank charges by telecos. Uh, that's what you find there on uh, the Guardian newspaper. And as right as it has, USSD services cannot be offered but for free to banks. Find out more about that story on the Guardian newspaper. On the Nation newspaper, we have Sultan Tacos Khan on prosecution of Christians. That's what you find on the Nation newspaper. We stand by our position as a writer. Find out more, find out more on that on uh, page 7 of the Nation newspaper. And on the Vanguard newspaper, we have Nigeria may sink deeper into poverty. World Bank warns, says population will grow by 35 million in 10 years, adds growth vulnerable to local global risk. Uh, that story, a very interesting story there. You would like to read that up. It's on the Vanguard newspaper for this morning, the last Friday of the decade. Uh, on the Daily Sun newspaper, you have um, 2023 PDP elders shot for consen consensus candidate, VOT chair Atiku free to contest again. You find that on page six of the Daily Sun newspaper but we're going to be looking at what we have on the vanguard newspaper where it reads the nigeria may sink deeper into poverty world bank warns and as riders has says population will grow by 35 million in 10 years adds growth vulnerable to local <coughs> global risk how worried are you let me start with Dipo. how worried are you with these numbers oh well I'm, i am very worried but um, like we said off air that I'm not quite optimistic that that prediction will come true unless we do a lot of things right economically because I mean <clears throat> before we came on this side of the show we saw their papa gridlock now that's a huge economic tool on our hands that we've not been able to maximize wasting. as a people so that does raise the question that why won't we sink deeper into poverty as a people with our growing population. Today, our GDP growth is less than 3% with our current number of 200 million, which is not even sustainable for what we have right now. So what are the um, economic tools or infrastructure that we're putting in place to ensure that even at our current state, we can sustain our current capacity, let alone in another decade, that we'll have 35 million people joining what we have right now with a few probably um, departing from us either by migration or death or for various reasons so yes I am, I am very very worried at those numbers and um, it is unfortunate that our government they, they aren't treating this as a state of emergency especially from an economic point of view understanding that our, our population as it is and our ever-growing population because we always have an ever-growing population we've had that for the last 15 years of mm. from from time as it is in Nigeria, to understand that we do need to be very aggressive and we cannot afford the little wins that we're getting from um, certain policies. We need a holistic plan mm. that we know that there's a, whole, there's a full strategy to ensure that whatever we're doing is holistic from top to bottom, that we're winning at every level. Not in 10 levels, we're winning in only two and places. And we're taking two steps backwards. And we're taking two steps backwards. So we do <laughs> so need to be very but, deliberate but, but about the fault, this. But the fault sometimes, it, it, of course the government might want to look at the population growth, mm. but the fault sometimes, the, the government may not necessarily have to go to each house and say, you must give birth to one child. The Nigerian culture comes to play here. Um, so you have in IDP camps, a lot of persons, the children there are increasing enormously. Uh, mm. 
where does the fault lies on the people or the government? Both parties. Mm. Both parties. Reading that news, I got so worried that uh, uh, with the number of our population, it should be an advantage. Mm. But to this part of the world, it's a disadvantage. China capitalized on it, and what they were able to turn that to is to have cheap labor, and everything you see being produced all over the world goes through China. And once you have that, you create employment role for your people. Mm. But here in this part of the world, our population is a problem and is an addict to us. Fundamentally, the problem is infrastructural development. Once you don't have the infrastructure, what would the labor people rely on? Let me borrow from what Deepo said. The ports. We have so many ports all around, but we concentrate on Lagos port alone. Wasting productive hours. It's quite alarming, the news I heard, of which he told me at the back end, that it takes you about 900,000 to bring a container to Nigeria and take you over a million to move within Lagos and, uh, and uh, Alaba. Within Lagos, mm. look at the distance, the number of uh, 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 days that same container will stay on the... That's one. Look at our roads. Within Lagos, you can spend an average of two, three hours to get to your place of work in the morning. How productive can you be? Mm. It tells us that we have outstretched the infrastructure as we speak. And what the government needs to do, why I said the government needs to be built, is to make sure that we have development on our infrastructure. Our road network should be improved. See, the road network we have 1976, when our population was less than 100 million, is what we are still battling with. Mm. There are no improved no ro so there road are, networks. It seems to be like a strain on the So we are strained, we, we are constrained all over. And situation where everybody wants to come to this part of the, uh, 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 of the, of the country. country. We should decentralize it and make other states to, be, to make things happen. With we're that, we can move forward. We won't have to leave it here. Hopefully, uh, we'll get to discuss this later on. Uh, yes. the, of course, it's a huge problem we have. Of, of course, of course. It's worrisome Very and huge. Worrisome. the government should just yes. take action. All right, Dipo Oyewale, thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you. And Shesu Kwadi, thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you for I'm still thank expecting you. the rice and chicken and turkey. No, 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 no,